is it visible okay uh, thank you for your invitation and welcome everyone to my talk so in the invitation it was said that uh, there should be something controversial or something nobody else knows so i tried to make some statement controversial and which was provoking uh, my thoughts so let's see if uh, i can provoke you also <laughs> so heterogeneous concurrency is a system where there are different type of processors are combined via shared memory now these systems are fast emerging because it gives a promise of performance improvement and energy efficiency so and these are actually appearing in various applications and all the devices so i will start with an example to understand this uh, phenomena before going there uh, here is a message passing example it is quite well known that x and y are zero and the in the left thread we are writing two values on x and then y and on the other thread we are reading it in the opposite order now if we consider sequential consistency this execution of a equal to 1 and b equal to 0 is not possible this is pretty well known now if we go to the program which is running on x86 then this execution will also not be possible because the write write pairs and read read pairs cannot be uh, reordered and this gives us this guarantee whereas when we go to arm processor these reorderings or the out of order executions are possible and this behavior is possible so this is pretty well known now from there on uh, we can think of a system where we have x86 and arm processor consider this as a hypothetical system are connected via shared memory now if we consider these programs where one thread runs on x86 one thread runs on x86 and another on arm now the question is whether these executions will be possible or not any idea yes i guess i assume that like since the two processors don't synchronize with each other it's going to be worse than either of their individual ones okay so this will be possible okay that's a good explanation exactly so if we consider the arm processor it allows the reordering of the write write or read read pairs and because of this reordering after that we can come up with an interleaving execution where this behavior is possible now with this understanding now we wanted to understand for another type of heterogeneous system which comprised of x86 cpu and ptx which stands for nvidia gpu now the question is that uh, what is the possible behavior now when we went to this area there was first we wanted to understand that what are the difference between these two different types of processors so there is a long list you need not to read through that but basically the threading models are different the primitives have different properties the orderings of these accesses are different there is some more details for the uh threading models so i will come to that so to begin with what we observed is the threading model for gpus are very different from the cpu models because the gpu actually uh, structures their thread in terms of hierarchies and based on the proximity of the accesses that makes a difference when we have synchronization or different relations now because of this uh, we have various different types of primitives in x86 we have uh, traditional load store read modify write and fence whereas ptx provides these operations along with memory order similar to c c++ and there is scope uh, different types of scope so cta stands for if it is working on a very close set of threads then gpu says that if it is in one gpu and the system is if it is an entire system now with these three parameters the memory access becomes a combination of memory operation order and scope now so in ptx you find a large number of possible accesses 
And these accesses actually determine based on certain relations that what is the memory ordering and what is the synchronization property we can get within a GPU. Now, if we look at the other types of properties, for example, multi-copy atomicity and non-multi-copy atomicity, then the, here is an example, the independent read and independent write example. And uh, here this behavior is not allowed in x86, but it is allowed in the PTX model. So, now, if we take these programs and think of it that executing these, where the read threads are x86 and the write threads are the PTX threads, now we wanted to ask that what kind of behavior we can get. Will it be allowed or disallowed? Any guess? Yes? Does the, do the, uh, the PTX, when they the write, when they go into the x86, does it uh, apply the x86 global store? Yes. <laughs> Could you repeat the question? Oh, not question, okay. but... So the question is that if the rights of the PTX operations... Oh, sorry, I mean, can you repeat what the audience member said, is, is what I meant, for the benefit of people watching. Okay, okay, okay. So the question was that if it is the rights in the PTX, if these rights go to the x86 world, then whether these, in, these rights will be treated as x86 rights, if I have said correctly. Yeah. So, if that's the case, I equally say that it would be forbidden. Yes. So, again, we have the similar kind of the other direction we can think of where the rights from the x86 go to the PTX world. How will it be treated? So, uh, in that case, it will be treated as the PTX model suggests. And we have to deal with these two different types of behavior for different kinds of models. Now, with this model, we wanted to understand that what are the possible program behaviors we can get on such a system. And in that case, the way we do, we wanted to develop some formal semantic models operationally and axiomatically. Now, we started with the existing models, which looks like this. I think I need not to explain this, but uh, the, it's, uh, the left one is x86, the right one is PTX. These are available in uh, respective papers. And if you look at it, the the, there are several differences between these models, but I want to point out to one or two cases. For example, if you consider the two very primitive constraints, the SC per location and atomicity, then in a CPU world, it is SC per location and atomicity is actually throughout the globally for the entire execution and for the entire systems. Whereas if we go to the, to the GPU world, these, these properties are scoped. For example, that if you look at this, uh, the properties in atomicity and essentially the SC per location, there is an additional parameter, MS, which stands for morally strong accesses. So which says that how close are these accesses in terms of the scopes of the GPU? And based on that, we can give the guarantees of coherence or atomicity for these systems. So these differences are actually fundamentally uh, there between the CPU and GPU world. Now, when we wanted to, and we had to consider these when we are trying to model these systems. So there are some, so when we are trying to combine this, we wanted to have address some goals for the semantics. The first one we wanted to do is that if we have two systems and if we combine these systems and develop a joint model for these heterogeneous ones, then if we don't have the process, processor of one type, then the model should fall back to the original model of the system. So, and the second property that we wanted is that the existing compiler mapping from the existing programming languages to these architectures primitives should hold. Because we don't want that if we just combine two different types of devices, the compiler needs to change completely. Questions? This is, as they say, more of a comment. Um, 
I'm sitting here feeling very kind of queasy because in the spirit of John's request for controversy only, uh, I think it's kind of morally wrong to to think about or even to ask us to think about these combinations without some clue um, you know what what the actual interconnect between these things is doing. You talk about the x86 world and the PTX world, but you probably know, but some of us have no clue whether you know those x86 hardware threads are in an x86 classic system and the processors are not you know the memory models are not facts about the processors they're facts about the whole system right so what we consider that um, mm -hmm. these processors are kind of clusters it is a system as its own and they are connected via some interconnect so i have not gone there so far and we do not keep any assumption about the interconnects so if we for example uh, we have done some experiments with some protocols, but if we consider some different types of inter interconnects like CXL or other CHI, each of them will come up with different properties, definitely, and that will be also probably will strengthen the overall model that we are proposing now. But the first uh, step what we wanted to make is that irrespective of how these they are interconnected, how do we can combine them? If we have a very weak interconnect, then will we be able to uh, come up with a model for that? Yeah, I don't at the moment see how that makes sense, but I know nothing about GPUs, so you should just carry on. Okay. So, <coughs> so basically this is the uh, existing mapping. We wanted to keep this. And to do the modeling, so how much time do I have? Uh, six minutes. Okay. So. We wanted to understand, so axiomatically we wanted to understand these relations and essentially what we try to do is that to understand especially the read from relations when they are going from one side to the other. I am not going to explain the relations but uh, there are several subtle definitions which uh, actually we had to develop and finally combining these two we got yet another complicated model that is the compound memory model between the x86 and uh, the CPU and the GPU. And this model actually could uh, preserve the, the memory mapping from the scoped C++ programming language to each of these individual processors and we could prove them. So in addition to that, this, com this axiomatic model we also proposed an operational model, lost pop, which is uh, kind of uh, had the flavor of the pop model. And uh, based on that, we could actually set up the x86 and the PTX model on this general framework and could define the rules that how these different operations can interact. And for experiments, uh, we actually experimented these systems on a, a simulator on GEM5 with x86 CPU and GCN3 GPU with SWMR coherence protocol. And with these experiments, uh, these results of the experiments actually matched with the loss pop uh, lean theorem prover encoded version and the alloy analyzer which was encoding the uh, axiomatic model. And basically, the, it was kind of going with our intuition that the machine behavior and these models were kind of showing the refinement uh, properties between different models. And if you want to know more details, then uh, this is in our PLDI 23 paper on compound memory models. So this is briefly what we have done in this work. And I think there are uh, I will, uh, several things we can do in this direction. So this actually revives the questions of all the things which we were thinking for the CPU or GPU models about the semantics of the programming languages, the compiler transformations, out of thin air behavior, race freedom properties. And the question is, can we come up with some language model which gives us all these properties together? So the second one, a possible direction could be 
that if we can come up with some compositional semantics and reasoning technique for that. Because the way we developed the semantics, it worked for this case, but what if we are trying to compose our different combinations? How easy or difficult it would be? So in that case, having something very compositional will be helpful because in that case, we can guarantee certain properties and model them very efficiently. And what I think is that uh, these, these heterogeneous models are not only within the architecture community for weak memory model. Yes. I was just wondering, I, sorry, I don't have a microphone. Thank you. Uh, it's counterintuitive to me that you would actually expect a different uh, memory model for the programming language for these. Why would you not just expect the same uh, the same memory model to apply if some of the pieces are running across the platform. Right. So the language exactly not a new semantics, but for example that uh, we have to the formal definition we need adjustments considering the compiler transformations can be different as well because GPU allows different types of optimizations. So we have to recheck that if the existing semantic models are allowing those compiler optimizations. Okay. And when I say this, uh, multi-language concurrency, so this can also happen that different kind of programming languages also interact. For example, that one recent example could be rewriting some part of the Linux kernel with Rust. So in this case, uh, Rust provides several guarantees for ownership and the, the certain properties of race freedom. Now, if it is interacting with other uh, memory models like C, C++ or uh, Linux kernel memory model, the question is that what will be the overall properties we can guarantee there? Uh, I mean, Rust has unsafe code. So already within Rust, the, like, you can see all the weak memory things. Generally, unsafe Rust just uses a C++ memory model, though there's some asterisks there. Uh, Rust and Linux, of course, is interesting because now you have two memory models in the same process, which uh, I don't think we want. So my advice has always been to just basically use, pretend we can use the LKMM, the Linux kernel memory model in Rust, right. and hope it works the same way we hope it works for normal Linux in Clang. Right. Um, but that's not very principled, of course. Right. Make sure you use the coding restrictions that we have for Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Basically write unsafe Rust the same way you would write unsafe C, put some nice wrappers around it to make it nice Rust, and then... Yes, so to add to your point that uh, Rust has all this in the unsafe part and probably that does not, Rust does not want to give any guarantees. Now, yes, so if you can also establish some more properties here, so I don't know, maybe it requires more thinking, but what if, uh, what kind of properties we can guarantee when it is interacting with other models? So Great. with this, the talk formally ends. But I'll be happy to take more questions and looking for discussions. Thank you very much, sir.